What is good guys and girls of YouTube? It's me, Justin Omoe, here looking like I'm about to square up on a homie. But I'm here with a video for you guys and girls to show you and, well, you know, help you all with your music and artistry and such. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something that you guys and girls may have seen or have heard. And it's just like, yo, this thing damn annoying. How do I get it away? It's like clicky popping sounds in FL Studio. So let's let's go ahead and face it. When you start up FL Studio on your computer for the first time, you'll get this uh, demo. It's like, I wanna hide, na, 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 na. whatever. But when you press play, you'll hear a lot of clicky and weird ass noise. I'm like, yo, this what? Why does this sound so bad? The reason is because probably your CPU and disk usage is extremely, you know, not good. Meaning it overruns. It's gonna create something called a underrun what's happening is that your cpu usage is being like psh, like shooting all the way over or your disk usage in your computer is just like all right i can't i can't handle all this so what happens is when it can't handle all the process that is going through it's gonna make your audio driver your audio device may it be your computer's audio chip that's inside or your audio interface itself is gonna go You're gonna hear a lot of that weird noise and you're like, why? Why? How do I fix it? Don't worry because your boy Justin's gonna help you out. So what is happening is something known as a underrun is occurring. This is when your computer cannot handle the process that is, you know, being moved of the audio sample buffer rate. Basically it's doing all this that it can and then when it can't, it's gonna make those clicky sounds, meaning that hey, Pass that one, screw that one, let's go to the next one. Your chip's gonna be like, oh, I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> All right, cool, so how do I even, you know, fix this or address the issue? First, I'm gonna I'm I'm run it down for y'all. To be able to see if this is a CPU problem, because it can also be a plug-in problem that doesn't have to do with the CPU or disk space, but to see if it's a CPU problem, you'll see in the middle at the top in FL Studio, you'll see a little meter. Once you hit play, if the CPU or disk usage meter, you know, peaks, it goes all the way to the, the was it, right side? All the way to the right side, it's going to overload its, you know, stuff and cause those underruns. So it is the CPU and disk usage problem. So the way to fix that, of course, clean your disk space, man. If you, if you got a lot of crap in there, go ahead and uh, clean it up. One way is to go into um, computer's administrative tools or just basically go to search, search disk cleanup. Once you're in the disk cleanup, just go ahead and click start. You know, let, let's clean up the stuff and then it'll find stuff like temporary files and this and that, whatever, unused files. Just click um, clean and it's gonna do the whole process, it's gonna clean out that stuff and yeah. Also, see to invest into a hard drive so you could be able to put some of your extra stuff that you don't need in there, in there. So your hard drive that's using, you know, the running Windows and, and, and FL Studio, that has space so you can be able to work and let process go through. As for a CPU, you're going to have to clean out or make, basically end processes or close programs that uses CPU. That's like Google Chrome with YouTube, uh, especially that. But yeah, it's like that. There's probably, I don't know, Windows MP3 player or something like that. Windows Movie Maker. Anything that you don't need on, turn it off. Skype, turn it off. Oh man, Skype especially. Or, you know, anything that uses audio or video. That's going to screw you up. To be able to do this, hold Control, Shift, and press Escape. Or, you know, press all three of them. And you'll get this box called the Task Manager. You could go ahead and click process and then see where it says CPU. Just click the word that says CPU and then you'll get a list of stuff that's, you know, showing and using the most CPU. Of course, don't take out FL Studio or Image Line, whatever it's called, or Explore EXE. Just, you know, basically find the programs that you can identify and be like, all right, this got to close. You can end this process, close it off. You can always just close the window itself, but, you know, yeah, that's a better way. Be wary of the things that you do cut off because in the end, if you, you know, click something like, oh, let's kill off this host thing, it could screw up with your computer and make you lose some visuals or some crap like that. That is how to reduce the CPU as well as, you know, the disk speed. If that does not help, 
it's all right. You could use things within FL Studio, such as the CPU or the CPU multi-core options that will allow you to click and disable or not disable, but spread CPU usage different to different cores. The multi-thread processor for generators is basically things that you use in, um, to create sounds like, let's say, Citrus or Toxic Biohazard. Anything that you use to create in the channel rack, the pattern list, that's uh, the generators. If you do select that, it's going to send processes to one side of the processor, another side of the processor, depending if you do have a multi-core processor, which in most cases, it's always a something, you know, it's always duo or, you know, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, things like that. You have to check your CPU. With the multi-generator process thing for the mixer, that's going to split the effects. So that's stuff like the Reaver, the Maximus, the Limiter, the EQ, all them junks. That will do the same thing. It'll split and put some here, some into the next processor, and so forth. For me, I have a uh, AMD Phenom 2 quad-core processor that has 2.9 gigahertz. It's not the best, but hey, well, it's good. All right, so I, I'm not I'm not complaining. If you want to find out what processor you have and you don't know how to, go ahead and hit Start as well as the E button like on the keyboard and it'll open up your my computer or if you want just click my computer right click anywhere go to properties and then you'll see where it says CPU and then your CPU will be shown you can always upgrade your processor something I wanted to do but uh, for mine I only get a six core at max for two hundred dollars I'm like ah, I should wait until I build my own computer that'll be beneficial but yeah anyways you can upgrade your CPU processor unit, but you have to learn more into like, you know, hold voltage, is this socket the right socket, and you know, all that junk. It's best to learn or Google it yourself to see, or YouTube, because YouTube, I know uh, Linus Tech Tips, he's very useful in, in those, you know, areas. You can also upgrade your processor if you want to have a bigger CPU to enable more buffer to you know help you with your music and last but not least which i should have spoken about first is the buffer rate sample rate if you are using something known as a primary sound driver it is going to send your audio file data into something else like uh, something else in your computer and it'll go transfer to another thing and then into your driver if you select something known as an ASIO drive, which most of y'all should know if you are into recording, you've probably seen in my other videos as well, but use an ASIO drive because the sounds will go directly into the audio driver. With that, it will help you in terms of processing the signal so you won't have to put so much of a load on your CPU and your disk driver because you do have an audio card that is dedicated to convert those things, AD conversion, DA conversion, and so forth. But that doesn't mean you're still free of the curse of the underruns. The pop, pop, pop. <laughs> if all case, you'll have to go into your buffer rate and click it and move it more higher. The higher the number, the more of a processing time it'll give you, which will indulge, or if that's the right word, give you latency, which is a delay. The less you put the buffer rate sample rate, buffer sample rate, the less you do it, it's going to give you more clicky sounds. So you have to avoid that if you do get the clicking sounds in the first place. If all else fails, then here's my conclusion. You're using sounds that process so much of a bit rate, which is like, you know, 196 kilohertz. And you know, that's overloading your CPU. So you have to tone it down, use 24 bit. And my last thing to say is that the popping and clicking sounds, it will not affect your overall exporting it will not give you those clicky sounds so if you are getting those clicky sounds it's not from you know the, the fl studio exporting it's not from those underruns that you're hearing because underruns are only you know during playback it's not during exporting because exporting it has all the time it needs to do the processing that's it that's basically the whole underrun popping clicking sound thing a majiggy problem if you don't understand it still, you can either rewind this video and play back from the start, or you could go on FL Studio and hit the button on your keyboard that says F1. 
not the F button and then the one button, but there's one on the top called F1. Click that. It's called the help option. Then you could go over to CPU, type in CPU or something, and you'll learn about it even more and more and more. That's what I do. Uh, well, that's what I did back in the days. But, you know, I'm just teaching y'all because I know it. So, yes, thank you all for listening. Hopefully this made you a better you in your music and understanding and, you know, yeah, stuff. Thank you all for listening. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. My name is Justin Omoe. Be sure to subscribe to Justin Omoe if you want to stick around with the latest updates. And yeah, thank you all for listening. And that's it. Peace. I'll give you a backhand, son. Wah!